even a sniff of what he paid for that X Men collection. Ah, Mr. Like Mandrake is here. Oh, there we go. Mr. Mandrake is here. That's Look at that smile on Greer. Are you ready to come straight on? Hello. Hello there, Tom. Hello, everybody. Good evening. Look at that grin on Graham's face. You were his <laughs> number one. You were his number one choice. Yeah. I, I reached out to you for that smile on his face. <laughs> I'm all nervous out. now. I was all right. I was all right before. Now I'm all nervous. Yeah. How you doing? You had a good day. Very good. Busy day. It's always a busy day when you're uh, teaching at the Kubert School. Yeah. Are you, I think I saw you did you did that horror course as well or something like that. Is that is that what you, you do now or? Was well, uh, I, I did do, I, I did co-write the horror course with Joe uh, quite a few years ago. Uh, that's a correspondence course. Uh, uh, but what I teach at this, at the school currently is um, uh, narrative art and sequential art for the second and third year students. Okay. Okay. Interesting. I'd like to talk more about this school because like, you know, what, what it's like there and whatever, maybe we can uh, plow through your history. <laughs> we go back to, to, to year one or your, your early formative years. I'd like to know how you discovered your artistic talent and what nurtured it and uh, what influenced it sort of thing, if that's possible. Sure. Uh, where, where shall we start? Um... <laughs> I'll let you decide. <laughs> <laughs> when did you feel that? But yeah, when you first started to draw, like, what was it that um, drew you to, to drawing and discovering that you could do it? Well, or... um... I, I was always interested in comics and movies, uh, art in general, because my dad was interested in comics. He was, he was a big horror fan, a big uh, pulp magazine fan. You can see, oh, point over this way. Hold on, 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 uh, that are my those were my dad's so you know oh, okay. I, I had i had access to that kind of material early on and uh, a lot of uh, uh approval on on the part of my father for that kind of thing we used to argue about who was better superman or captain marvel that kind of thing so, <laughs> yeah, cool. so who was better <laughs> <laughs> well i don't i don't anymore i don't much care but at the time yeah. i was the superman fan and he was the captain marvel fan so yeah, uh, cool. which I would have thought would have been flipped simply because you would have been the kid and then having the kid aspect versus the adult aspect. Well, when when I was a kid, there were no Captain Marvel comic books. You know, we're talking oh, yeah. about the, the early 60s. And I had just I had just recently discovered like the early I was a big early Marvel fan early on and sort of uh, begrudgingly bought Superman comics when I couldn't find anything else to read. So I buy all the Marvels and then. And then if the, when I was done with that, I buy the, the DC comics. Uh, so I was a Superman fan by proxy because I couldn't find any Captain Marvel stuff. And dad would say, oh, well, if you had read Captain Marvel, you'd really like that too. <laughs> there you go. And I got to ask, I got to ask, I got to ask. And I'm a big Marvel guy too. Do you still have those old Marvels? I do have some of them. And, uh, you know, the first marvel book that i bought myself you know the own money was captain uh sorry uh the avengers number four where captain america returns oh you know? that's a nice one um and i had no idea what was going on i got i bought the comic book i got all excited because there's captain america and he's returned but i didn't know who he was i just thought oh, <laughs> captain america. so i brought i remember showing it to my dad and say look this is awesome captain america returns who's captain america so he had to explain it to me you know <laughs> but yeah, that memory is very firmly burned in my mind. So I mean, it's not, it's my copy is ripped to hell, you know, after being read like a thousand times. But I still got it. And yet it's oh. perfect. It's it's a gem mint ten all day long just for that story. Yeah, absolutely. Is that how you cut your teeth with work at Le with art? Was you like copying the comic books? Is that what sort of your early art? Uh, was. Yeah, I used to, <laughs> I used to draw all over them and pull them apart and you know like everybody else and so most of my comics you know you didn't think about it at the time you read them until they fell apart and you and you lent them to other people and you know they they for the most part were trashed. Yeah. Oh god. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. I, I, right. I remember some of the old 
some of the old comic books have got that the adverts in for if you can draw this picture you could go to art school and there was the joe kuba art i think they had some adverts is that how you ended up going to them did you see them all old adverts and think oh that's for me well um you know when i when i got out of high school i went for a, about a year to a school in cleveland called the cooper c-o-o-p-e-r school of art and that was uh, in the 1950s that was a very prestigious art school but by the time i was going there kind of had lost a little bit of its grip uh in terms of being a solid art school but i went there thinking you know it was going to be a good place to go uh but they were relatively negative about their attitude toward comic book art they were always they were pretty down on the whole thing but yeah. while i was going there i saw an ad for the Kubert school that would have been the first uh class which i think started in 76 and i was like wow that's where i gotta go uh, um, yeah. So I quit. I quit going to school. Uh, took a year off. Did some factory work. Got some money together. Um, threw what I had in my car, and I drove to New Jersey. I and that was it. Yeah. Was that a long way for you to go? Was it to, to go there? I'm sorry. Say again. Was it a long, long distance from where you were living at the time? I lived in Ohio, in New Jersey. So. Uh... Less than a thousand miles. Okay, that's a long distance. If you're in the UK, that's a long distance. <laughs> <laughs> For us, it's not much. I'm in Indiana. These guys are in the UK. I'm in Indiana, so I can relate well, to the Midwest thing. It's 423 miles from my mom's house. <laughs> okay. What was it like back then in the early days? Has it changed a lot over the years? Well, um, yes, uh, because the school was, you know, it was unformed. So I was in the second graduating class. Uh, 77 to 79. It was a two-year school. It was uncredited. Um, they were flying by the seat of their pants. It, it was first. It was great. Um, we we had wonderful instructors, and, and while they may not have exactly had a curriculum together, they they were great guys. You know, all professional cartoonists. We had we had Joe and High Eisman and Tex Blaisdell and Erwin Hazen and Dick Giordano, uh, Dick Ayers. You know, guys who really cut their teeth in the business. They knew what they were talking about. Yeah, yeah, there's some heavyweights there, you know? Yeah. And um, then, uh, obviously, your classmates were pretty awesome, apparently, huh? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so, you know, Jan Dursma and uh, yeah. Altieri and uh, uh, Ron Randall and, and Kim DeMulder. And, you know, it's funny. We were talking about that. I was just sitting here trying to repair this. I don't know if you'll be able to see this. I've got this page that, that, that Kim inked. This is a Swamp Thing page from initially. Oh, wow. This lettering just fell off of it. This is lettered on the board, <laughs> except for this one little piece. i got to get this reattached. <laughs> yeah. was, like, was that crocodiles pulling a chariot? It looked like. it yes. Like, yeah. This is from, uh, what year is this? God, I have no idea. This must be from the uh, from the 80s uh, Swamp Thing. and. Uh, th this is uh, Bayou Swamp Thing, so he's got crocodiles in a... <laughs> <laughs> and you reattached that with basic rubber cement, or is there something specific? Um, I was thinking about using rubber cement, but I, I may use some spray-on stuff. Uh, you know, it's great to have these lettered on the boards like this one is, but then there was that period of time where then they just started putting the lettering on with all the uh, photostats, and they would, they would put wax down and put them on. And then those are like all over the place. I've got a box full of lettering that's not attached to anything. I, that's I hate that. <laughs> oh my goodness! Well, you, it just fell off. You don't know where it came from. Is that kind of thing? Is it? Yeah, yeah. You, have a, you have a box full of artwork and random lettering. But the old school way was rubber cement, right? Just simple rubber cement. Well, the the old school way, for the most part, like I, I've got several pages in this. Uh, oh my god. <laughs> here because I pulled them out of a box the other day. Most of these pages are just lettered right on the board, so the lettering is attached. So back back at this time, you know, you would pencil it, then the letter would um, letter it right on the board, then you get it back, and then you would ink it. So the, you know, this is not coming off here. This is solid. You know. Yeah. Cool. cool. And that's okay. pretty, that's the yeah. best way. Some of those loose letters you could go through the like, family album and stick it, stick the loose, the loose work like titles over like family pictures. See if you can <laughs> come up with some good uh, combinations. That would be quite fun. Yeah. <laughs> so, right. when you went to the Joe Kubert School, was it? Was it? Uh, did you have to do an entrance exam, or did you just oh, have God, to give yeah. your money? Um, 
so yeah, before uh, before you get accepted, <clears throat> you know, the, the first time I drove out to New Jersey, at least for this reason, you know, I had to put a portfolio together and come out and okay. meet Joe and uh, and show him my portfolio. Because at that time, Joe was the one who did the portfolio reviews. Oh, I was sweating bullets, you know, I was going to yeah, yeah. meet Joe Kubert for the first time and show him my portfolio. I was terrified. <laughs> but Joe was Joe was a he was a sweetheart. He's a great guy. Um, and he looked over my stuff and and shook me by the hand and and said, Tom, you're the kind of guy we want here. But, oh, I was so relieved. <laughs> Was there any like flaws in your early art that they helped to knock out of you or to, to correct on you? Or was it just uh, was, you know, like like everybody else, I was raw as hell. You know, my stuff was was pretty crude. Um, but, uh, you know, I was pretty determined, too. So anything anybody told me to do, I would, you know, I'd make the effort to fix it. So um, by the time I was out of school, uh, like as I say, it was a two year school at the time. And then shortly after that, it became a three year school. Uh, but for for me and for Jan and Kim and several of the other people, we were able to get backups in Sergeant Rock right away. And that was all through Joe making sure that we, you know, progressed. Um, we were doing backups for Sergeant Rock, and I and I got um, background work for uh, DC, and that was largely through the benefit of working with Dick Giordano. So I was doing backgrounds on um, Supergirl for okay. for uh, Vinnie Coletta. I was doing backgrounds for Vinnie. Um, Eight bucks a page. I was getting eight bucks a page on that. Um, <laughs> and I was doing a lot of work on those backgrounds, too. In fact, I still have up on the wall over here, I've still got a check. You know, was, remember where you came from. It's uh, $64 for one of the jobs I did, eight bucks a page for wow. myself. Wow. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's, that's what I was you know, initially doing. And I also managed to pick up a job right before I finished school at uh, the Cuban School as an art director for a magazine. Modern Drummer Magazine. They came around looking for an art director at the school. I didn't know anything about drumming, but I knew a little bit about um, art directing, uh, especially paste ups and mechanicals and things like that. So I got a part time job working as an art director and that paid some of the bills. And um, and I don't know if you're aware that, you know, Jan Durzema, who is a classmate of our, mine. Uh, we also got married. We've been married since 1980. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I was going to ask about what's it like having two artists in the house? Do you like help each other out? Is it like any weaknesses? Like, Jan, I can't draw horses. Can you come give me pointers or something like that? We, that we have helped each other out many a time. And <laughs> there, there have been there have been jobs where, you know, the pages just flying back and forth. Uh, mostly, you know, I'm sure you're aware we, we have our own things that we do. Um, but sure, there have been there have been plenty of jobs where uh, we've assisted each other. And, you know, both of our kids are artists and developing their own careers too in fact oh, our daughter sean teaches at the cubert school now too wow um, that's so they both went to the, they both went to the cubert school as well right yeah. awesome as a school grown in like numbers like how many students it has and that kind of stuff and like an area that is school well I, I believe that the uh i'm not i'm not sure about the number of students right now i'm going to guess there's probably 90 90 students in the whole school right now and it, it's changed locations too so uh, when i was going there it was in what they call the baker mansion which is just a nice beautiful old house that's in uh, in dover i should say the outskirts of dover and now it's in uh, a large what was at one time a high school and then a middle school that's right in town so it's a much bigger building a much different venue mm -hmm. um, so they they can they can handle more students than they they were using or taking in when when I was going to school there. Okay, cool. Um, I'm going to chime in real quick. I don't want to step on Gray because Gray is going to want to ask you a million questions. <laughs> but I got you with a couple, you know. And uh, I know I'd sent that original message to you and was trying to get in touch with you, and then JM put us directly in touch. JM shot you that message. And I didn't want to bug you then, but I am going to say it live. We'd also be honored, of course, you're here today. If you ever want to come back on, that'd be awesome. If Jan ever wanted to come back on, wow, would that be cool. If your kids wanted to come on, <laughs> anything like that. You, what, a, what an exceptionally cool household that is yeah. for us comic book guys to be able to go, oh. wow, look at that. <laughs> Look, at, there's was, a household of, we grew up on yeah. comics. I was How just going to cool. 
So. I was going to say, was it awkward to work out what kids' pictures to stick on the fridge? You know when your kids do a little picture? <laughs> stick on the, you must have had so much competition, like, to who's going to go on the fridge kind of thing when they were going out. <laughs> uh, this place is crawling with artwork. It's, uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't know, I don't know if you want to, I don't, I'm guessing you're on your computer or whatever. I don't know if you want to pick it up, but I know I'm speaking for everyone watching. I'd give my right arm to look at that, look around that room you're sitting in right now. Yeah, well, you're, like, you're seeing the cleanest part of the room right now. I'd prefer that. <laughs> or even the walls. I mean, you just say, I got this on the walls. You pull those things out. You, we're in awe. I, yeah. I mean, we're, I'm, a, I'm an all the time talker, chatty cat. They get me going anyway. And I figure I'm going to lay back because these guys are DC guys. I'm not. When you start pulling out original art and tell them stories and my jaw just drops and my eyes get closer and I'm like, oh, how amazing is that? How cool is that? That, you know, I'm, I'm guessing you have overlapping work with Day with Jan and uh, Arion or anything like that. And I could just sit here for hours and go, hey, how about that? Hey, what about that? And how about this issue number five or 13? Now, Tom, you have, to, you have to see here that uh, Graham and myself are English. Yeah. And Kyle is American. So we're very <laughs> restrained. And the best compliment you're going to get from us is, well, it was pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> that, that just, yeah. That's extraordinary. That, that just a uh, can we ask a question? Do we get into stuff from Tom now, please? Yeah, now you guys can go back to the question. Yeah. Right question. I wanted to ask about your about your surname, Mandrake. It's a, it's a, you could have gone to Hogwarts with a, with a surname like that. You know, is that also was Mandrake the magician one of your favourites as a kid? That kind of thing. But our our name, a family name, actually. Um, my my grandfather, my my father's father, was actually. Um, born in from what we can tell he was born in czechoslovakia he came from prague but his name wasn't actually mandrake um and he was uh an infant when he came here as close as we can tell his name was something like mandrake or man Manaric, something mm -hmm. similar to that yeah. when he came to the u.s um he was given the opportunity to either pick his own name or was helped to find a name by the woman who adopted him, and it became Mandrake. So, uh, cool. while while I am, uh, I do have some English uh, blood and English surname. Um, I'm he he in fact was not English, yeah. so we ended up with that name, which I do love. Yeah. Um, uh, oddly enough, it, the person who gave me that name was uh, Czech rather than English. Yeah, so it's, it's like an anglicized version of the of the original name, I'm guessing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then a lot of people did that, didn't they? They sort of changed their surnames to make it sound more, yeah, interesting. And anglicized. Um, all right. So you said Manzarek. If you do a blood test or whatever, one of them um, DNA test. test, are you going to find? It? How would you feel if you found out you were related to Ray Manzarek? <laughs> <laughs> little doors joke there okay so, that'd be yeah just an obscure thing there but so it's basically it was always comics for you then so you started doing that other art but like you you went to to this you know to the cubit schools because was it always comics you wanted to work in even yeah you know uh i was i was really focused on wanting to work in comics you know early on um i i had some interest in in working in animation and I did one or two jobs in animation. I was like, yeah, this is, it's good work, but it's not for me. Right. And uh, uh, by the time, it, it, by the time you get around to the 1980s, book illustration was becoming a more and more difficult field to get into. Uh, I've, you know, I've done some book illustration and it's, it's great. But um, I think what I enjoy the most is the storytelling aspect, the narrative aspect of uh, comics that was, it's also what I love to teach. Um, so yeah, no matter what I do, I always come back to what's my favorite thing. It's the storytelling. Yeah. So even when it comes down to people, you know, people want commissions and can you do me a drawing of this or a drawing of that? It's like, yeah, I can do that, but it's nowhere near as interesting to me as resolving the problems of storytelling. Uh, 
showing the action on the page. So you're showing it in, in the picture form rather than leaving exposition kind of telling the story. Absolutely. The art tells the story. So when, when you work with a writer, do you prefer it if they give you a rough idea of they, what they want or an exact idea of what they want? Uh, you know, there, there was a time when I would have emphatically said that I prefer a plot style, you know, that I that I have the freedom to uh, work plot style. And I, you know, I did a ton of work, especially with John Ostrander. Yeah. And, and John John preferred to work plot style. And, and we bounced off each other very well that way. Working with John, um, we'd get together, we'd hash the story out together. He'd write a plot, I'd do the pencils, he'd do the script. And for us, that was an ideal way to work. However, not all writers work well plot style. Some guys write a great script and, uh, it, and it's easier for them and therefore for me to just take that script and with the understanding that there's a likelihood that I'll change some of the storytelling, not, you know, not just because I want to be a dick. I don't want to, I'm, it's not why I'm doing it. I'm doing it to help the storytelling along. Um, and, I, and I've, I've never really had anybody come back and say, wow, you ruined that, you know, right. I do it to make the storytelling better. So with, with the understanding that when I feel that there needs to be a change, I'll do it. It always works out for the best. So yeah. um, I'm, I'm comfortable working either way and I'm happy to work either way. Um, so anymore, I don't have a preference. I find that the challenges of both uh, represent just a world of, of, uh, of interest for me. Uh, was a strand of the favorite person you've like collaborated with or is what is you've covered with so long as the martial manhunt around and the specter run i think so is he is he, is he, the, is he the person you collaborate with the most or has there been someone else you work with well in, in terms of the amount of work that we've done together john would certainly be the one that i have done the most work with because we did uh, i forget how many uh, issues of um, grimjack we did together but it must have been I don't know, three or four years worth of Grimjack issues. And we, we did a 12 issues of Firestorm and five years in Spectre and three years in the Martian Manhunter. And uh, uh, there was a couple other projects in there that I'm blanking out on, right? <laughs> but yeah, you know, just in terms of sheer volume, without a doubt, uh, I've done more work with John than anybody else. Is there any plans to do any more in the future? Uh, we don't have anything lined up right now. Is that you're not looking, you're like not actively looking for something to do together, or it's just if it happens, it happens. It, it's it's more of that, you know. Right now, it, it's just I've got a bunch of other stuff lined up, and John and I haven't talked about doing anything uh, together in the near future. So, but you never know, you know. One mm. day you just say, "Hey, I've got an idea," and then you go. <laughs> There's that creeps as well. So, so I showed off my creeps earlier, and I bought these off you from the your website. I'm sure that website hasn't changed since I bought these in 2002. It's like 20 years. I'm not sure you've updated your website, have you? It looks very... That's, that might be the... You know, I, there is an old website that I used to have that's not really mine. Oh. <laughs> it's probably the website that you're talking about. Okay. None of the links work. And it's like... I remember that's why I ordered these from now back in the day. I'm sure it was. And I was really... You sent me a sketch and, I, and you signed them all. And I was like, ah, I've got these. I was well excited. <laughs> um, like yeah, I, I got a feeling that's that's that old website. Um, uh, I've, got, I've got a new one since then that I only put up uh, four or five years ago. So oh, I need to find the link to that so I can put it in the description down below so people can come and visit you. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll get you guys a link for that. Yeah, cheers. I can update everything. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> okay. Um, or okay. actually... Yeah, if you if you have access to my Instagram, it's all in my link tree on my Instagram. I'm really bad at this kind of stuff. Yeah, I need to yeah. get all your links so I can stick them in the in the description. Yeah. <laughs> have you got a favorite um, character that you worked on? Um, that's always a tough one. Um, yeah. and it, you know, it, it would be easy enough to say the Spectre, only because you know that that became like the fan favorite. Mm -hmm. uh, but. I, I, Realistically, I don't have a personal favorite. You know, when I go to conventions, um, I know what I'm going to draw for sketches. I'll, I'll come in and I'm going to be drawing uh, the Spectre, the Martian Manhunter, Batman, and the Swamp Thing. That's what <laughs> I'd like to get. And then there'll be like odd, odd ones that'll come up. Like somebody will come running up and say, uh, you know, draw me Blockbuster or somebody out of, out of nowhere, you know, which is always fun. I'd like to see your Judge Dredd. I think you do a mean Judge Dredd. Have you ever drawn Judge Dredd? 
I've done some oh, Judge did. Dredd's, you know, at, at conventions. I would love to do a Judge Dredd story. That would be really fun. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because I think Spectre like um is like the most um sort of suiting to your to your style, your look and something about it. I always sort of stuff was all shadow and creepy and etherealness and like he was just you know, just perfect in, in Spectre. It's it's always interesting how um you become you become known for doing something. Thank God you become known for doing anything, you know, it's yes, it's yes. a blessing. Um you don't necessarily start off being uh or thinking, well, I'm gonna I'm gonna become the crossover horror superhero artist, but <laughs> when it becomes that, and 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 <laughs> you know, the Spectre sort of became my iconic character, which was great because I, I love it, you know. Mm -hmm. But uh, you don't you don't necessarily aim for it, but you get it, and, and it's great. It's awesome. Yeah. And the, about the creeps, was that that was you worked with was it Mishkin on, on this? Yeah, was Dan Mishkin and I did that together. Yeah, no, no plans to do any more of that. Uh, we never, we never seem to to get an opportunity to do more issues of that. We've talked about it on and off, but uh, you know, it's it's funny how you co you come up with an idea, you you get something done, and then you just keep. I'm always like running on to the next thing. You know, it's like um, I just finished the project with. Um, uh, with JM, we did we, we did wisdom, and we got that done, and. and Hopefully we're going to do you know the next issue, but meanwhile I just finished another um, uh, graphic novel with uh, Steve Niles and uh, and I've, I've got another one that I'm working on now with, and I can't really talk about this one that I'm working on because they want me to keep quiet about it. But it's always it's always like my feet are moving constantly because <laughs> well I you know first it's what I love to do so I'm just constantly so, working on. So something. how do you split your time between the teaching and the uh, doing the art? <clears throat> well I. I, I keep my teaching limited to two days a week. Okay. Uh, so that first, I, I've made the mistake before of, of like taking on more teaching hours than that. And then it's like, I, I'm killing myself. Can't do that. <laughs> yeah. uh, Can't do that. Uh, and, and then, uh, so w when I'm teaching, yeah, it, it fills up my time incredibly. So during the, the school year, I'm just like working all the time and taking a few hours off here and there. And then during the summer, then, uh, you know, I have more freelance time, but there, there's a huge benefit uh, for me to teach. And that is that I, I have access to all these young people and their enthusiasm and their interests. And yeah, I just think it's, it's a fantastic thing. Plus uh, that benefit uh, of giving back, you know, that's what Joe was doing. He was, he was giving back and all the teachers that helped me out, you know, teaching me how to, how to do all of this work. And I think as much as anything, that that's the reason I'm at the school. And of course, you know, there's a new owner there, Anthony, uh, he bought the school, was it two years ago? And, uh, he's a young guy. He was in, in my daughter, Sean's class. And okay. He's bringing the school, some new enthusiasm back into it. So it was nice to sort of, I, I was there at the beginning when the school started and now I'm back for its rebirth and it just feels good. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's great. So it's not in the Cooper family. Does your does your does your wife teach her as well? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and your daughter. Yeah, <laughs> she'd be called the Tom Mandrake School, surely. <laughs> I'm gonna write my name and uh, Sharpie on the front. Yeah. <laughs> Good idea. Good idea. Favorite so, Joe Cooper story. I'm sorry. Favorite Joe Cooper story. Favorite Joe Hubert story. Uh, well, let's see. Uh, you know, Joe was was such a such a big influence on me and uh, and on Jan. And he was, for me, he's still a voice in the back of my head. And, you know, and I've talked I've talked to Andy Hubert about this before. Um, Joe Joe would tell you how to do stuff, and then he would say, "You're not going to understand this for like five, ten years. So I'm going to tell you how to do this." I'm going to explain it to you. And and Joe's approach to teaching or telling you how to do it, he would just lay it out flat. Here, do it this way. And you'll understand later on. And Or if you didn't do something right, you knew it because he would go. <laughs> <laughs> you never wanted to see that, you know, because you just feel like, oh, man, I screwed up bad. Not angry, just disappointed. Oh, yeah, that, that, that feeling that you just disappointed him. 
with your terrible artwork. You didn't know it was wrong, but oh, you got that thing. Um, <laughs> but he's still he's still in the back of my head. He's still doing that. But but he was right about not understanding uh, a, a lot of what he was explaining until years later. And and, and as I say, I was discussing that with Andy uh, relatively recently, actually. Mm -hmm. And and it wasn't until five or ten years after I was out of the school and you know and working professionally all that time that a lot of the stuff that Joe had been telling me was finally sinking in. And I was suddenly going, oh, that's what he was talking about. And now I find myself, you know, I'm talking to students. I don't, I don't do this one. I was going to ask that. <laughs> but, but I found out from the students because you do these things unconsciously. So roundabout, I, I can't remember if it was Sean telling me this or one of the, the former students, they told me I do this. <laughs> well, apparently I have a tell also. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, excellent. Yeah. So um, tell me, and I, I spoke to uh, JM last week and asked him the same question because you're both you're both older than me, and I retired a couple of years ago. Um, you know what is it? What what is it that gets you out of bed in the morning and says, you know, I want to go off and work? Whereas you could, you know, could be retired. Uh, well, I think it's just that I I have yet to feel like I've done. All the drawing and all the storytelling that I want to do, I just, um, I just love doing what I do. I, I love drawing and I love telling stories. And uh, I've I've got jobs on the board that I want to do, and that's that's just who I am, you know. Given yeah. the opportunity to um, to stop doing this, I'm like, why would I stop? If I retire, what would I be doing? Well, I'd be getting up and coming into the studio and drawing pictures. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, why not? Yeah. As long as you can hold a, a pencil and that, keep on going. That's what I say. Yeah. Yeah. Right. That's the, what Joe, you know, Joe was drawing until in, in, the day he died. He was yeah. literally in his uh, in bed drawing. It, he didn't have to. He was just yeah. doing it. And I, I think first, you a, a person has to be driven uh, to work in this field. It's not an easy field to work in, you know, to spend any amount of time in this business. You have to take a lot of you take you take a lot of hits. Uh, it's an up and down business. Yeah. Uh, sometimes you're on the top, sometimes you're on the bottom. A lot of times you're just floating along and nobody's really paying attention. Um, so you have you have to be doing it, I think, for yourself. If you're not really into this and, and loving the work, then I don't really see the point in it. And fortunately uh, for me, I love doing this. Jen loves doing it too. That's cool. just who we are. Fortunately, we understand that. So if if one of us says, ah, I, I got to go work, I, I got to go do this now. The other one's like, yeah, bye, have fun. <laughs> beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. So your current project just finished with uh, JM was Western. I think you told us a Western. Is that right? Yeah, it's a horror Western. Uh, ah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I was wondering about like artist styles. I think we can look at people's work and say, oh, that's that's so and so because of this and this and this when i always think of your work always because it's got shadows i don't know it's about your shadows you can kind of like and how would you sort of say people could tell your work it, to me it's just you know if that question even makes sense i don't know um i mean that's that's a legitimate take on it because my one of my interests about the finish of artwork is the interplay of light and shadow and and, and that comes i think from um from my influences on artwork and my influences in movies, you know, I'm a big horror movie and film noir fan. And so that influence of light and shadow comes from uh, what I like to see in filmmaking. And uh, um, there are times, you know, each project that I work on, I, I try and set up uh, certain kinds of visuals. Like you'll see when you see wisdom, or if you maybe you've seen some of the pages that I posted, some of them are that what we, for lack of a better term, traditional mandrake stuff where you see a lot of that kind of light and shadow. But you'll also see pages where there is uh, it's just an illustration style, where there's no solid blacks at all. It's just more traditional illustration with total line work. So I'm, I'm bouncing back and forth between a couple of different drawing styles within the project, which was very oh, interesting right. to me. Is that to delineate between the horror part and the, the normal day part kind of thing? Is that, is that what it is? It, it has more to do with separating out uh, the 
what we'll call the current uh, period of time versus the backstory by yeah, separating I... out the, the uh, drawing style. Yeah, and, that's uh, cool. Uh, Jen, Jen was nice enough to decide to, she was looking at the artwork and she said, you know, I think I should color this because I know exactly what to do with this. And I was like, okay, you do that. That sounds good to me. So I yeah, I, colored it. I saw that uh, Jan was doing the coloring work on Wisdom. Yeah. That's good. I need to get that. I need to go. I need to get that when it comes out. Um, someone was asking about a uh, page rate. I take it it's gone up from the $8 of backgrounds you were getting. <laughs> uh, well, it, it has, although, you know, realistically, um, page rates and comics flattened out um, pretty dramatically um, around the turn of the century, you know, and, and haven't done that much ever since. Uh, right. You know, page rates were going up nicely uh, in general. And then to some extent, depending on the company that you're talking about, they some of them even dropped. So uh, comics as a, as a way to make uh, a living, uh, we're doing okay. You know, I'm not complaining, but but it certainly hasn't kept up with the cost of living. Yeah, I get you. Well, what about the number that said, for example, the wisdom that you just done, do you get paid like a flat rate or do you get any kind of like, any of, any of your properties you get like, I don't know, extra money down the line for them or something like that? If they oh, get this is a creator own project. So yeah. uh, I, I'm, I'm in with the team, you know, oh, we're, we're, yeah. we're all part <laughs> of the creator own uh, situation here. Right. Yeah, he's, ta he's taken equity. He's taken equity <laughs> in the project. Cool. I'm in it for exposure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes, also, as a young upcoming artist, yeah. I, think, oh, needs all yeah, that, exposure. I need yeah. people to see my work so I can get some more work. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to ask about this. We were talking about Joe telling you you'll get this in five years' time. Are you still learning now? Are you still going, to, like, even at this stage? Always. You, there's yeah. only two ways to go when you're an artist. You're either, you're either getting better or you're getting worse. So mm. there's no such thing as staying level and i would i would never discuss any particular artist in this respect but i will say mm. that we've all seen artists who seem to artistically flatline and then sort of just you know mm. their, their work deteriorates and, and that happens when you sort of feel like well i'm good enough this is what i'm doing is fine um, and then you don't you don't experiment you don't take chances uh, your your level of interest deteriorates, and then you probably should retire because yeah. you're not interested anymore. You should probably stop doing what you're doing. Yeah. Um, so I'm always trying to find ways to get better. And and again, I've I've got lots of artists around me, so we can bounce things off each other and, and keep interested. Mm. Is there any project that uh, you'd love to do, like a fantasy project, something that you really wanted to always wanted to work on, like a character or a story? That comes up a lot. People will ask me, you know, like, are, are there any characters in Marvel or DC that I haven't done that I'd like to do? Um, and you were just, you were mentioning um, uh, Judge Dredd. Uh, <laughs> so Judge Dredd is like one that, that would be fun to do a Judge Dredd story. And, yeah. uh, you know, I was, I've been, in, in the last couple of weeks, I've been trying to clean up my studio. It's like, huge mess because i just did a bunch of jobs you know and you're working on jobs and you're like throwing stuff everywhere and then like, oh my god what kind of a pigsty am i living in here and, stuff. <laughs> and you start finding things and and I, you know i i was thinking the other day well it'd be great to do a spirit story and then i realized that i found a, a copy of, yeah I, I did a spirit story and i completely <laughs> <laughs> oh, way, wow. back, way back uh in the early 2000s and john and i had done a spirit story um but I guess if I had to say one character that I've never drawn that I would have liked to, that I'd like to, I mean, who knows, maybe I'll get a chance yet, would be Doctor Strange. Uh -huh. I so, think that would be fun. Um, I'm sitting here thinking if you're cleaning up around your studio and things, if you gather up a trash bag of like roughs and doodles and things like that, <laughs> you can just like put my address on that. <laughs> I will hang your scraps on my wall. I get in, I get in wow. trouble with Jan because sometimes I'll, I'll just find a bunch of roughs and things and I'm like, I, I can't keep everything. I'll try to throw it away. And she'll like, you can't you, throw it away and she'll take it from keep me. it here. Yeah, you can keep yeah. it here. There are, there are people that love that stuff. Just yeah, definitely work. 
So, yeah. you know, put those up for sale on things. Or like I said, if you got a trash bag to get rid of, <laughs> yeah. I give it my address because I'll find a place to, I'll find stuff to do with it. I'll distribute yeah. it around the world. I'll send you a pile of my trash. I, I'll <laughs> take it as long as it's, as long as it's writing trash. And There'll always be people who treasure your trash, I'm sure. If it's, if it's like <laughs> artwork related. Like I've got my awesome sketch here. Did you have like, a, did you give a sketch out to everybody you bought the creeps or something? Did you have like a big stack of them? Just I wish I could remember. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't ask for it. I think I was like, I went to the cave. I was like, oh, wow. Awesome. They're all signed. And <laughs> I reckon you sent my package to the wrong person. That's probably what happened. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's signed. You were you, sending that to that day. Cool. <laughs> I got some I try, to keep, try to keep my uh, buyers happy, so I, I can't remember what I was doing at that point. That's yeah. a while ago. On yeah. the subject of Cubert and comic book history and things like that, how good does it feel to be attached? The names you rattled off that were your original teachers and things. I mean, there's a straight line from them back to the creation of American comic books. That's insanely cool to me just to hear about. How cool is it that you were, what, two degrees removed from the beginnings? Uh, yes, That's... that is something to think about for me. Um, uh, it, it is great to, to have known those guys who are really right there, you know. Uh, and, and, and a guy like, like Tex Blaze Dell, who used to work uh, for Alex Raymond, you know, I got to spend a lot of time with him and Erwin Hazen, who, you know, he was, yeah. he, was, he, was he was there, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They, they were great guys to know and and to to spend some time hanging out with and and get to know what their experiences were. Uh, and, and I and I try to make sure that I, I spend some time talking to my students about the same kinds of things. You know, my my experiences, the way I broke into the field are completely different than what people are experiencing now. It's not the same world at all. Yeah. Being able to to walk into the DC and Marvel offices as we did in the late 70s, and, and hang out, you know, ask for work and things. Everything changed, you know, well, first from 9-11, because as soon as that happened, New York shut down and there was no more walking into an office, you know, without armed guards everywhere. And then, of course, now the, the publishing field is spread out everywhere. You know, Marvel's in New York and, and DC is in California. And uh, and they don't even, for the most part, they don't want you in the office. As a matter of fact, DC doesn't have offices per se anymore anyway. It's, uh, they're basically renting space and the editors are everywhere. They're, um, they're all across the US. And um, so it's, it's a completely different world. You have to get noticed in a different way. Uh, but a lot of the a lot of the same rules still apply about being determined and and getting your 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 work noticed by producing a lot of good work. Um, but yeah, a lot of a lot of what I did uh, has ch has changed. Uh, it, that's forty plus years ago now. So has anybody ever have we ever? Um, is there any chance we're going to get a Spectre movie? <laughs> you know that. Uh, I, I know on occasion people have, have talked about that, but I've never heard any really serious talk about it. That would be great. Chances are I'm not going to get much out of that. No, <laughs> no. I, you know, we didn't create the Spectre. We, if they no. were use some of the secondary characters that we created, we might see something out of that. Yeah. yeah. Do you get like really attached to the characters when you're writing them and to like maybe to the point where the writer writes something for the character and you're like, no, don't do that to him. Is that ever you had anything like that, or is it literally you're just cold and you just do what you're told? Or you, is there any times um, emotions have crept in? I I feel uh, attached to several characters, unfortunately, <laughs> 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 because you know I'm I'm a big fan of Swamp Thing, and I've uh, one of one of the very first jobs that I ever did for DC was a Swamp Thing job. Jen and I did it together. That was, oh God, 81 or 82. Okay. And 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 then, you know, I, I had a run of Swamp Things in the early 80s. Uh, Alfredo Alcala into a bunch of those and, and Kim DeMulder in some of them. Uh, and then just recently I did uh, several short stories uh, uh, with Swamp Thing and, and he appeared in a lot of the books that I did. So I'm, Big Swamp Thing fan. 
but unfortunately, as a, a character that appears in movies and TV shows, he hasn't fared that well, you know? No. <laughs> His appearances are like, ah, wow. I remember the uh, one of my favorite tag, like the first Swamp Thing movie, which was truly awful. <laughs> He's got a grudge because they turned him to sludge. <laughs> <laughs> and oh, that, that, movie, that movie transcends awful to the point where I can pretty much watch it because it's bad. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. It's one of those that's so bad, it's almost good. Yeah. Now, I, I, on the other hand, you know, um, when I when I first got on Batman, so that was, we're talking about 1985, um, and uh, Doug mentioned I <coughs> became the Batman team for about 12 issues. I mean, that was a for me that was like the high point, you know, at that time. Because you were and, quite uh, young, back, weren't you? You were in your 20s 30s early 30s um, so in 1985 so i was like 29 30 yeah. something like that yeah i was flying high that was great um but that that first issue was uh we created the black mask right you yeah. know first issue out of the out of the gate it's like create the black mask that was awesome uh i was all fired up to do the joker uh, doug had this idea hey let's create a new character it's like all right that sounds cool we'll do that and I have no, you know, you have no idea when you're creating characters. Am, are, am I creating a throwaway character or am I creating an iconic Batman villain that's going to last forever? Well, that's what happened. We created yeah. an iconic Batman villain that has lasted forever. And the Black Mask has had uh, many versions. He's been in video games and he's been in animation. He's been in movies. And yeah. each one has been completely different. And I've enjoyed every version of the Black Mask that I've seen. And it's like, this is great, you know. I created him, and he's got this life of his own. He's like he's all grown up, and he's doing his own thing. <laughs> he ended up being a lot more evil and sadistic than you first wrote him, because later on he he, t he kidnaps Catwoman's sister and and her husband and gouges out the husband's eyes and makes Catwoman's sister eat them. He certainly you know, has. <laughs> so that's I mean, one of those, one of the sickest things in a comic book, like a mainstream comic book that I think I've seen. He's become quite quite an interesting character as time has gone by. Yeah. <laughs> well, I've got a question from uh, one of our watchers at the moment talking about your, your relation to Incas. How do you get on? You know, how do you feel about the, your, their treatment of your... Well, uh, that, that's actually a great question, Alfredo Alcala. I mean, he's, he's an inking god. Um, nobody can lay more ink down on an illustration and still make it work than Alfredo. He's a genius. Um, and uh, when I was working on uh, the Swamp Thing, Alfredo was the inker on that particular run. And I'm, I'm in awe of what Alfredo can do. That being said, uh, I, I was doing issues of the Swamp Thing. I was not the regular penciler at the time. But getting back to what I was talking about, about Joe Kubert, Joe always told me, ink your own stuff. And I always wanted to ink my own stuff because I love inking this. To me, that's the fun part of the job. You, all, the he, all the heavy lifting is figuring out the storytelling, doing the penciling, and it's inking time. It's like, oh yeah, this is what I'm here for. <laughs> so um, I, was, I was in Karen Berger's office turning in um, an issue of the Swamp Thing, and I knew going in what this answer was gonna be, or what the question was gonna be. She offered me the book on a regular basis but I knew Alfredo was going to be the anchor, but I had, I had to say it. I, I said, look, I would love to do this, but I want to ink my own stuff. And Karen said, no, Alfredo is the look of the book. And she was absolutely right. So I said, no, I don't want to do this if I'm just a pencer because I want to, I want my, I want to be my own guy, you know, I want to ink my own stuff. So I turned down to Swamp Thing, which I couldn't believe I was doing. In the back of my head, there's a guy going, you're an idiot, you know? Um, <laughs> And I walked out of the room and Dan Rasper grabbed me by the arm and he dragged me into Denny O'Neill's arm and, uh, room and he said, hey, how about if you and John Ostrander do uh, Firestorm? And so I lucked into the job that, that launched us into doing all that other work together. So that was a good day for me. Um, oh, that's good. So ah, in, in, in a way, I'm, I'm sort of trying to answer this question, which is I can really appreciate a great inking job, um, but I do prefer to do my own stuff. Right. And Alfredo, there's no one, there was no one better than Alfredo. I look at his stuff all the time and just, he, 
like I say, he's a genius. Worthy for me. I'm always saying that I'm useless when it comes to art. Yeah, I like I'm even looking at the art. I can't really tell who does what half the time. What is the job of an inker? How how is it? How can an inker do their stuff badly or, or well? Can you explain to the layman, particularly me, what makes a good inker, what makes a bad inker? Um, that that is a complicated question. That's <laughs> not easy to answer. So, um. You can you can have a great inker and a great penciler, and they can come together and produce a less interesting piece of artwork than what you started off with. Because some people just don't mesh, you know. Uh, um, some inkers will bury a, a, a penciler, and some people's energy combines to make genius work. Gene Colan and Tom Palmer combined to make genius work. Wow! Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Um, other times you'll you'll get two people that are that are geniuses but they just don't combine so you know on one hand it, it's almost impossible to um, intellectualize why this happens or doesn't happen um, there there are some anchors and dick giordano to me is the epitome of this there are some anchors who feel that their sole job is to take the pencilers work and turn it into inks without changing anything. I learned early on from, from Dick uh, how to be like that kind of quiet inker, this sort of really nice, clean line that just accentuates what the penciler did. And, and you know, th this was back when Dick was, um, I think, editor-in-chief at DC. This was back in the early 80s. And he was, tr he was always training people because he had a big studio and he was teaching people how to ink. And he had, Dick had a, a system of how to ink. You do this this, this, and that's how you get an ink job done. And his system was clean. Nobody could explain inking as quickly and as straightforward as Dick Giordano. He was the best about that. But his style, I, I hate to use the word simplistic because that, that's, that's incorrect. Uh, it was uh, organized and clean and precise. Um, and, and that's as opposed to a guy like Alfredo who will take somebody's straightforward artwork and and I'm, I'm, I'm going to use the word bury it which is an unfortunate <laughs> term but what he, but he's an illustrator he's going to take that artwork and he's going to do what he does and turn it into this glorious piece of illustration um, so when when you're picking a pencil or an inker you have to decide where you want to land on it you are you going to take these pencils and and get an inker who's going to reproduce the look of those pencils exactly or are you going to try to find an inker who turns them into something else very different. And within those two things, there's a world of combinations. Some of them work, some of them don't. Uh, finding an ink, uh, editor who understands that process and, and finding those right combinations. Some editors love that. And I've had editors uh, not want to hire me just because I, I fight that process. You know, I want to do my own stuff. And I've had guys say, well, I like to be the one who decides who's going to ink and who's going to pencil. That's fine. Don't hire me. I don't care. Uh, right. But now, you know, that doesn't happen anymore because uh, people know, you know, I'm, I'm a, I'm a package deal. I'm going to do the whole thing. Cool. So awesome. Hey, Greg, I'm glad I asked that question. You know, is it cheaper? So if I'm, if I'm uh, the finance guy, is it cheaper to get somebody to do both rather than to hire two separate people? Uh, it depends on the people's rates, you know? Uh, so I, I think, it, it it has happened, I suppose, that you can you can hire a cheap penciler and then put an expensive inker on them. <laughs> it seems like <laughs> a, a weird process. I, I know that they, they they used to do that years ago at, at, at DC or Marvel, where you get somebody to do layouts and then get something somebody a little more high tone to finish it off and make it look better. But uh, cool. Is are they are they normally like comparable in, in like pay rates or is it like a pencil get paid more than inkers normally or the, the pencil rate is generally higher than the ink rate unless the penciler is just doing layouts and the inker is doing finishes so uh, there are, there are times when um, the breakdown is slightly different so the the process is a little bit different there the the penciler is doing less of the actual. Uh, work that means the anchor is going to have to go in and actually do a little bit of drawing on top of it so yeah the rates change accordingly interesting has there been any inkers that you've hated 
particularly your own work. Quit asking really him that. those questions. <laughs> but if, if that had happened, I wouldn't, again, I wouldn't name names. I'm not. I'm yeah, not, true. Uh, but hey, I, Graham, can I get you to enlarge me real quick? I want to <sighs> call back on something he said a minute ago, and I just. Okay. Byronies. <laughs> I'll just give you a general idea here. I've taken my young cousin. This is August 27, 2001. I showed up to the doors of Marvel Comics when I went to New York for a poetry award thing. And I showed up at the door and they buzzed me in and took me around the office and let me sit in the editor's chair. Yeah, you can do that now. Before, a week and a half before the towers got hit. And when you'd said, you know, it all changed that day, days beforehand, I got yeah. the grand tour and you know, th these aren't posters. That's original art hanging on the walls. Yep. They're original Jesco's. That's the mask that's on the cover of like FF 265. You know, those amazing things like that. And I could just walk up and I could just be like, puppy, puppy, puppy. Hold on. Yeah, you did. We'll go back to Tom. You can silence your mic for a bit. Talking about your changes, like what have they been the best and the worst changes in, in the industry in your career? Is that something you can oh, think about? Let's see. Um, you know, <clears throat> As, as more of an old school guy, there's a lot of things that I liked about the way things were. This is going to sound awful. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm going to get my old man on now. Uh, <laughs> you, you, you get off my lawn. Again, I've got these pages sitting here from Kim. I like I like old pages with the lettering on them. So hang on, um, I'm going to get up. I'm going to disappear just for a second here. <laughs> Um, but I'll keep, I'll keep talking. Spectre so. statue. I see a spectre statue in the background. Quite a lot of skulls in the background there as well. Yeah, I'm kind of a kind of a skull guy here. <laughs> they're, not, they're not the ones you use for the spectre number one cover, are they? You just copied all those. You just use this for. Uh, so even uh, though the, here's here's a double page spread from Winston. Put that up there. So you know you can have the artwork, and artwork is beautiful to look at, and I and I love having the the, the artwork, but well-placed well-designed lettering on top of the artwork to me is an addition to the artwork it should all it should all work together yeah so uh so first there there's a lot of positives that came from having computers and scanners because uh, we can scan our own artwork we can control the quality of the scans um thank you to uh to john who just posted that's a masterpiece i appreciate that um, uh, but at the same time, when when it became possible for all of us to have you know Photoshop on our computers and uh, and scanners right here, that meant that suddenly the artists um, became our own production crew. So um, a lot of the work that was formerly done at the at the offices. Uh, production work now we do that so you don't get paid more for that you know we just have to do it so you know now we turn in um, uh, fully finished files uh, so it's a little bit of extra work on our side the plus side of that however is that now I have finished files of all the work that I do saved on the computer I do not have that for years worth of work that I did before I did I have the original art so whenever I want to sell something or I'm concerned about the work and want to do something with it, I've got years worth of work that has to be scanned. And that is a lot of time that I'm going to have to do. So that's a mixed blessing right there. <laughs> the, uh, the business, you know, it used to be just a couple of companies, right? You had Marvel, DC, Dark Horse, and, and a few others. Now there's <laughs> a ton of companies and, and you can, you can self-publish. There's, uh, yep. Again, because of the uh, the internet and, and, and the ability to self-publish, there's a million places to go with stuff. But uh, it, it's harder to develop a larger audience. Uh, and, and when you self-publish, like when we just did the, uh, uh, the Spellbound Kickstarter, you are screaming into the wind to get attention because everybody wants that attention. So that's a that's also a kind of a mixed blessing. Yeah, I don't think you were screaming into the wind. I think you got funded on day one. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we, we did okay, but I mean, I, I think it's fair to say that we probably should do okay, considering 
that we we had a lot of uh, of talent there and a lot of work went into that one. Yeah. yeah. Um, but it's it's hard to get noticed in in a business yeah. now where there there's so much information going on all at the same time. Also, yeah. social media. I mean, I I think I think some people like to do social media. I am not one of those people. I do it when I have to. But um, uh, yeah, I I, I I initially I was like, okay, I can do this, and I dove in hard, and I burned myself out, and now I'm having trouble getting back into it, and and find I'm, I'm having trouble finding the balance, basically. You know, how uh, much to do without like killing myself on it, and then and then hating hating the world because I've been on it too much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely got to get a balance with and like everything in life, really. <laughs> yeah. I mean, sorry about the dog. I had to give yeah. that dog attention. So, yeah, no part of me not giving her attention. <laughs> have, have you ever done any writing? Or I, I have. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I did. I did a. Uh, <laughs> I did a Hulk miniseries one time that n absolutely nobody knows about. Okay. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. Oh, and, uh, I did a uh, recently. I did a uh, an anthology uh, again that nobody knows about. Um, and I'm writing. Uh, you know, I've always got writers that I want to work with and want to work with me. And uh, and so I've I've sort of held back doing a lot of writing now. In the last couple of years, I want to get. I've got a lot of stories on hand. It's like, oh, I should do this. I should do this. And it's like, well, I better start doing these now because. I'm going to run out of time pretty soon. Uh, maybe not pretty soon. I'll give myself a couple of years. Yeah. Um, so I, I've got a, a, a graphic novel that's almost finished. It's like, I'm just going to write and draw this, and then I'm sure I'll find a publisher for it. So it's almost finished. Um, I, I would have finished it last year, except the wisdom came up, and I wanted to get that done. And then this thing with uh, Steve Niles came up, and I finished that. So within the next year or two, I'll have a couple of graphic novels done. Uh, that uh, I wrote awesome. Are we going to be able to see that whole mini series? I'm just chomping at the bit to see that. Now. That whole mini series came out 20 years ago. Oh, I thought you said that. <laughs> <laughs> what was, what was it called so we can find it? No, nobody. No. It was called The Hulk Unchained. Uh, um, yeah. Unchained. Okay. I thought you were talking about something different. No, it was a writer thing you've right. done in the past. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, I've seen that one. I thought, oh my God, is there one well, well, not yet seen? Was the writing bit something you wanted to do, or something you always wanted to do? Or they say to you, "Would you like to write something?" How did that come about? Um, so it's it's always been something that I I enjoy doing, um, but I'm a I'm a slow writer. For number one, I'm I'm am relatively slow. Uh, number two, it's always been on the back burner because I'm uh, I'm not good at turning down projects. I mean, I'm always doing this stuff and. And that's this is on me that I've got these projects. I probably have, uh, let me see, two, three, four, four or five graphic novels that are just sitting there waiting for me to do. But you know, with your own stuff, it's always like, well, I'll, I'll get to that. I'll get to that. Yeah. So yeah. that's that. That's something I, I should have just taken care of before and just didn't get around to. But now, now I'm finally starting to uh, turn that bucket and, and make it happen. Well, what about Tom, my understanding is that your wife has got a Star Wars character named after That's her. right. I saw that in the weekly page. So I want to know if there's a Star Wars character in, hidden in the Star Wars universe that's you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't think so. Um, okay. <laughs> so certainly everybody in this house is modeled for a Star Wars character at one time or another. We've all been <laughs> <laughs> doing this or that, you know. <laughs> awesome. When when you was a kid, like first doing your um your, your little drawings and like copying the superheroes and all that, did you ever come up with your own superhero character? You thought one day I'm gonna make a comic book of this. Was is that anything that you ever had in you? Still oh, to be done? Oh um you know before uh when I was in high school, I had a friend, and we used to put together fanzines for ourselves. And uh, we had a, a character um, uh, named Icarus, basically exactly what it sounds like, you know, a flying character. Right. And, and we printed a couple issues of that up. Um, my dad used to have an advertising agency, so uh, we 
he wrote it. I drew it. I used to go after hours to the uh, to Dad's agency and print it. I mean, I did I did the whole thing, you know, from the camera work to the printing of the of the book. And yeah, we used to do that. Matter of fact, uh, uh, my friend who wrote it, David Kellogg, actually became a writer. And one of the first books I did for DC, um, I don't know if you guys remember this or not. It was called New Talent Showcase. Do you remember New Talent? Yeah, I've got a few of them. Yeah. So I did a, uh, a story in there called uh, Sky Dogs, and he actually wrote that story. So the guy that I was writing uh, with when we were just kids, we actually did a, a little bit of work together professionally before he decided freelancing was not for him and moved on to other things. Cool. He's still, he's still a, my best friend, and we still see each other all the time. Awesome. Uh, major question here. Are there any of those fanzines still left in your stacks hidden back around there? They're, they're, well, they're not here. They're in my mom's attic in uh, uh, Ohio. Oh, wow. <laughs> if, if, you're look, if you're looking to get rid of any of those original fans, <laughs> like I, I was, I was going to say, I, talking of like original characters, there's, I don't think, correct me if I'm wrong, there's ever been a Mandrake Man character. I think a man take man would be an awesome superhero or supervillain. <laughs> you know, at one time I was curious about getting access to Mandrake the Magician. I thought that yeah. would be that would be fun to do. And I was actually in contact with um, you know, there there's a difference between the comic strip Mandrake the Magician and the actual Mandrake the Magician who was, you know, a real magician, a real stage magician. Oh. And um and there was an understanding between uh, Lee, I think it was Lee Falk who who wrote Mandrake the Magician, who wrote and drew it, and and the real stage magician. They just kind of live and let live between the two of them. But uh, the stage magician's granddaughter got in touch with me uh, a couple of years ago to find out if somehow we were related. Of course, we're not, because as I told you, my grandfather just ended up with that name. Uh, she's a writer who lives in New York. Um, but yeah, the, I. I was always curious if there was a way to make that happen, but uh, I could never make any inroads with the uh, the people who own the rights to that. So oh, that's a shame. Is King Features on that or something? I think Dynamite was doing some. Uh, I'm fairly sure it's Dynamite. Yeah, yeah, Dynamite. yeah they, they, they they managed to get the rights to licensing for everything, but um, Dynamite <laughs> low uh, page rates are not something I want to deal with. Uh, <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's a shame. Uh, I'm sure if you if you were drawing sexy sexy vampires, your page rate would go up with Dynamite. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I, I did quite a few covers for them actually, uh, and that was fun. You know, uh, I did a bunch of covers for them for just a variety of uh, books, everything from uh, like Kiss to Red Sonia and things, and and uh, and it was I had a really good time doing that. Yeah, have you ever drawn Vampirella? See, I, I, sometimes I have to stop and think. <laughs> I start to forget what I have and haven't done. I don't think so, but I might have. So don't. Don't quote you on it. Could yeah, could be a cover in there that I've forgotten about. <laughs> awesome. What what's um what, so you tell us again about your projects that are coming out? Your you got the various graphic novels and stuff you can't talk about at the moment, but well, they, that's the problem. That right now the two things that I'm that I'm working on, uh, it's obviously outside of wisdom, are I, I'm working on a, a big 120 page graphic novel. Unfortunately, I can't really tell you what it is. So uh, I gotta let that ride. As, as with the thing with Steve Niles, which is gonna be announced, I think um, at the beginning of this coming year. So I've gotta let those sort of lie for the moment. Cool. Maybe in, a, maybe in a six months when you've got these all out, you can come back and tell us all about them. Absolutely. That'd be nice. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to lay back and not hoard all the questions, but well, you've asked anything yet. I want to pick your brain so ask bad. Ask a question. <laughs> ask a question. <laughs> no, just on so many things. I mean, just literally on so many things. You know, just we could yeah. go year by year by year and talk just, about just, history and things <laughs> like that. And Kyle, like just ask said, a question. Bring, you don't need bring a in the wife. Bring in the. <laughs> and talk about that. No, I'm, I'm saying I'm not going to ask a bunch of We want you to ask a question, please. Please ask a question, Kyle. 
I don't know. I don't know. I don't want to just start picking his brain right now. We're an hour into this. I don't want to torture people. So, so uh, what you right, get, here, here, and it's not even about comics. You've transplanted basically from the Midwest, even though it was Northern Ohio to the East coast. Um, are you more comfortable there? Or do you just kind of keep the Midwestern in you? Or are you glad to put the Midwestern behind you? Well, you, you can't you can't take the Midwestern out of the boy, you know. Yeah, uh, I'm well. still, with with that in mind, um, you know, I spent the first uh, twenty some years of my life in northeastern Ohio. I'm still a Browns and uh, Browns fan, you know. Yeah. I, I brought that with me, and my my family still lives there. Um, but I think when you think about living on the East Coast, I live in in New Jersey. But this part of New Jersey is uh, not what I think a lot of people perceive New Jersey as. This is uh, a really nice uh, area. We've got a beautiful farm market near us. Uh, there's uh, wood, woodland trails around here. This is a really nice semi-mountainous area that's right here. Uh, I don't know if you've been around. So, so Dover is the town that um, uh, the school is in. And we're one town over, but it's it's not the kind of uh, like uh, Newark or Patterson kind of area that you may be thinking about. Because a lot of uh, a lot of New Jersey is actually just a really nice, well, countrified area. It's state. the Garden State, and so yeah. and, that's, and people still sort of make fun of that. But it, parts of it are it's very much true. Quite literal. Um, speaking of Cleveland and from off the streets of Cleveland, let's talk Harvey P. Carr. Are you a P car fan? Uh, you know, I, I guess I'm going to say in general, no, but I can respect what he did. Yeah. Cause I mean, he was a curmudgeon before anybody was a curmudgeon and he never let go of that. So, yeah. but yeah, when Miles stepped out in a world war two, but who was an artist out of uh, Cleveland who ended up teaching a man. <laughs> Who hated comic books when you were telling those stories of growing up with those guys that just hated the idea of comic book art. I'm sitting here reminiscing of my, about my childhood. <laughs> and stepdad from Cleveland that hated comic books, but me just loving them. He thought Superman was the dumbest thing in the world, yet he was an artist, and it boggled my mind because well, I was like, but this is that. I, you know, I, as I said, with the, the school that I started out at, people. They just had a terrible attitude about uh, comics. And realistically, in the late 70s, even in the early 80s, when I started in this business, it was not cool to be in comics. It wasn't cool to be a nerd or that any of that kind of stuff. And it's completely changed. I, I saw a question flash by there. I didn't catch it. Yeah, I'll put it, we'll go back in a second. OK. Uh, uh, yeah. But things have completely changed. You know, now it's. It's not. It's more than okay to be a comic book artist now, but it certainly yeah. wasn't when well, I started out. Uh, going yeah. back to the seventies and eighties, I can tell you right now. Anytime I saw your name in a comic book, I immediately thought you were amazingly cool. Well, I'm thanks. kicking around in the Marine Corps, and I'm thinking, these guys are so damn cool. You know, <laughs> There's a much more. So, so um, Tom, the question you missed is: Are yeah. there any artists outside of comics who influenced you? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, I was just talking to, uh, you know, I'm always trying to talk to the students about, um, you know, looking for influences outside comics because it's so important. And uh, uh, the Brandywine School of Artists are, are one that really has had a big influence on me. I'm talking about Howard Pyle and N.C. Wyeth uh, and, and those artists. Um, I was just trying to get one of my students interested in uh, Edward Gorey, you know, the cartoonist, not a comic book artist at all, but uh, an illustrator who's uh, had a big influence on me. So while the uh, the Brandywine School artists are considered to be, in some in some respects, um, illustration artists, they're still just glorious painters, and there's a. Uh, 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 you know, museum dedicated to their work that's not too far from here in Chad's Ford, Pennsylvania. Okay. And uh, we, we make it a point to get down there every couple of years and just, you know, recharge our batteries looking at their paintings. Well, that's but, a good idea. 
Yeah. That's one of the favorite books I own. I own a, like a 1936 Jules Verne Mysterious Island with all new Wyeth. Well, the, and the, it's, the it's, it's, yeah. it's amazing. They have, uh, you know, all the other Wyeths are represented in the museum there. And, you know, Jamie and uh, uh, it, it just, to me, that's one of the, the most outstanding families of artists in, in the U.S. I'll have to look into them. I've never heard of them. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to have to go. In. I'm going to have to get yeah. them up now. Yeah, uh, feel like a right Philistine. Here I am. <laughs> <laughs> what about um, you? You're in Jan's. Like, do you ever have any like any any loggerheads at all about art? About how art should be done? Is there any like different opinions that you have to do with art that ever sort of clash with each other, or is it always plain sailing? in terms of our feelings about other artists or yeah other... or just about how you go about your art maybe or you know or what, well, what Jen and i have art. very different approaches to our artwork but that's you know that's to be expected um we we have uh, a different pace as to how how we approach our artwork we have different feelings about you know how much noise we want in the background um I, I, t I tend to work at a slightly faster, slightly faster. I, I'm much quicker about getting work done up front. She's a much better uh, artist in terms of, this is just my opinion, she can do likenesses much better than I can. So if, if it's a question of doing likenesses and things, I'm usually like, can you help me out with this? <laughs> um, you just have to know what your strengths and weaknesses are and and we all have them you know there's no point in, in in worrying about it it's it's great to to recognize what your strengths and weaknesses are and it's fine you know we, we're not yeah. all going to be good at you, and do you uh share a studio or do you have separate studios uh we have separate studios yeah i'm upstairs and she's downstairs okay <laughs> so when when we're working on the same project which we we are doing one um this was what last year or two years ago it was uh what the heck was the name of this thing it was based on a, a tv show and we picked it up because we thought it would be fun from dc werewolf joe i think where yeah i think that's what it was called anyway it just it's this goofy comedy thing about this this werewolf character and some of it was likenesses and some of it wasn't and we we're working simultaneously on the pages and we just go running downstairs. We'd lay them all out in the hallway. You do this, I'll do this, you do this, and I'll do that. We grab the pages, separate, work on them, come back down, spread the pages out again. Um, and you just, you know, I mean, it's been a long time. We trust each other. We know what we're doing. <laughs> so that's just a little comment, not a question. So now you're paid less, but you're cooler when at parties. <laughs> Which is that good? Is that better? Is it better to be cool or is it better to be richer? <laughs> Well, I guess when I need money, I just sell original artwork now, right? Yeah. <laughs> is there anything or bags like... of trash, you know. <laughs> yeah. Is there, yeah any, is, there any, like, is there anything you would pinpoint as being a weakness in your art, maybe like historically, not now, and if you get to work on more than other things to get right? Well, I could, uh, I could, I could always get better um, at uh, uh, any anybody, I think. Uh, I'm not going to speak. No, well, I shouldn't speak for everybody. You, you can always get better at, at anatomy. You can always get better. You know, you, you'll screw up a hand. Um, I could always slow down and, and you can always get better at storytelling. Storytelling is a deep well you can never hit the bottom at. So there's always something to be learned there. And you, you pick up somebody else's work and you go, oh, look at that. I got to remember that trick. Um, you always have to be working at improving your line. If you're not if you're not working at improving your line and techniques, again, you're not working at getting better, you're getting worse. So no matter what you're doing, you constantly have to be working at improving your techniques because there's just no, there's no thing in one place. And uh, realistically, uh, you have to deal with the fact that as your body gets older, you, you have to fight things like, I'm, I'm wearing trifocals right now, you know? <laughs> you have to, you've got the problem with your eyes and things and mm -hmm. it has to be dealt with. I say, if I was able to draw anything that you could draw, I'd be totally amazed. But do you get blase about your own work, where you like you, you don't look at it and go, "That's just that's, that's normal work," or is there like a, a moment where you draw something and go, "Bloody hard did a good job there." Does that you know, once in a while, once in a while you draw something, and you go, "Oh, that looks great." How did yeah. you? Yeah. 
house and you, know, you come into the studio and you're like, I can't draw a goddamn thing. <laughs> uh, you know, th those days are fewer and far between, realistically, um, because you, you, you are able to uh, reach a point, and, and this happened a long time ago, it's not like it just happened yesterday, where you know that your worst day is still going to be pre a professional day. You know, on my worst day, I can produce professional quality work. But on a really good day, I can do something that I can look at and be really proud of. And, yeah. and that's, a, that's a good day. You get it done and it comes out just right the first time. You're like, all right, it's Miller time. Mm -hmm. I can, I can awesome. close up shop. Ha. That's but, the next so, question. Go ahead. You can still, you can still have, a, have a bad day where you're just like, I don't know what the hell's going on. But we're, <laughs> we're not machines, you know? Yeah. We're going still, back to Cleveland and going back to history since Cleveland between rock and roll and comic book history and Superman, you know, you probably went to an adjacent high school to Siegel and Schuster, if not the same one. Those two guys, did you ever want to meet them? Did you get the chance to meet them? Did you get a chance to meet all, all the guys you wanted? I mean, since you got in with Hubert and them, is is there an unfinished one? Did you not get to rub shoulders with one of them or did you want to, or did you get a chance to talk to them? Well, it, you know, it, it's always great to meet uh, the people whose work you admired. Um, and it, it seems like recently uh, we, we've lost a lot of the, the, the creators that, um, uh, that you grow up uh, really respecting. You know, we lost Neil Adams relatively recently. Yeah, uh, and and uh, it was it was tough to lose Joe in, in uh, 2012, um, and my dad died a week after Joe died. That was that was a bad year. <laughs> oh God, yeah. Uh, but yeah, um, and and at a convention, you know, you always want to go up and, and say hi to the, the the older creators because you never know, you, you know, when when they're going to disappear. I was great to meet Tom Palmer and tell him how much I loved his work. Even it's even better when you go up to say hi to somebody like that and they go, "Oh yeah, I know your work and I really like it." Then you're like, "Ooh, Tom Palmer." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's better than who are you? <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, because oh, I got to yeah. tell you, I mean, this feels great to be able to sit here face to face because I'm not a convention goer, but to sit here face to face and go, "Dude, you're awesome." And thank you for sharing that with us. Thank you mm. for sharing your talents with us. And that smile that was on his face when he showed up <laughs> that original art we did. Yeah. <laughs> you bring it up to kidding all of us, man. And we all, the there are just tens of thousands of us out there who are grateful for you every day. And I love getting a chance to tell that to guys whose names were on the printed page where I was just... I'm I'm back to I'm 56. I'm back to being a 13 year old kid. Going, man, dude, how cool! Uh, your name's in this comic book. You did this art. How cool! You're awesome. I, I've I've got to say you're you're definitely one of my favorite artists. I've got to say that as well. You're definitely one of the ones I've always like. Every time I see your work, it's like, oh, Tom, maybe do this one. I must uh, be spy or I must do, must read it. You know, but yeah, you know, that's enough for me. Right. <laughs> I don't like to be. I don't like to do I have to tell you. I have never known this guy be known <laughs> to anybody ever before. But you were number one on his list. That's why yeah. I reached out to you. Well, and I, I really game, hope though. you I don't think it's possible. I hope you hear that enough. I, yeah. I do. I genuinely hope you hear enough that, damn, dude, that's amazing. I mean, <laughs> it is amazing. And you are genuinely appreciated for having your talents and sharing them. That you got <laughs> you got paid to brighten people's lives, and you damn sure have. And well, I hope you hear that enough to keep. Is, it first, I I really appreciate the fact that you guys had me on here, and and I do, I do appreciate that everything that you guys are saying. And but you you know also from my end, and I think from the creators' end, uh, this is a great job at it, at its core. It's just an awesome opportunity to do something that you love doing and have other people that are right there to appreciate it. And uh, one of the great things about comics, I think, is the interaction between the creators and the fans. And I don't know that there's a lot of um, uh, art forms where 
maybe outside of music where you can, you also can have that interaction mm -hmm. where we, we can have this kind of thing. Uh, it, it gets, it gets to be too big, I think with movie making and things like that. But this yeah. is, it's a, it's a wonderful business in that respect that, you know, that I can, I can work with, with kids who want to be in it. And I can talk to guys like you who are really as excited about it as I am. So I really appreciate you having me on here. And, and then uh, there's another layer of cool that you are teaching another generation of kids that, yeah. you know, how, how many classes have you taught? How many more generations are, are influenced by, yeah, we lost Joe a decade ago and yet his line still just keeps going straight through you, through these people, through your family, you know, how, how oh, cool. I want to know who your favorite student was as well. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Who was the best? Yeah. Who should we look out for? Get him in big trouble for that let, one. Let me, let me rephrase that question so you can answer it. <laughs> have, have any of your students ever contacted you after they've graduated and asked you to do, asked you to work with them? Well, uh, I mean, Anthony, like I say, he was in Sean's class and now he's running the school. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. You said, yeah. yeah when yeah. when yeah. first, after he graduated, Anthony was uh, an editor at DC. I worked for him there. He was an editor at, um, at, at Dynamite. I worked for him there. Now he's at, uh, uh, he's running the Cubert School. So, I mean, he's a prime example yeah. of, of how uh, the school has had a tremendous influence in, uh, the business and you know you could go to almost any comic convention if you said if you've been to the cubit school raise your hand i think half the creators would be raising their hands at this point yeah 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 so <laughs> good lord oh, I'm on, I'm on, if you ask me to ask another question i'm gonna open another can of worms and go hey you've got another hour and a half <laughs> and i don't want to do that to you but i'm telling you as long as you want to hang we can keep coming at you with flattery and questions all day long. But you need a breather. Well, let's, you know, let's we're here an hour and a half. I want to be nice to you, but I also want to say, hey, yell at your wife. Tell her to come in and say hi. Make us. <laughs> no. But Jen's, I, Jen's chasing the deadline down right now. To cover, yeah. so. uh, but it is up to you. I mean, if, honestly, if you want to sit and hang out with us a little while longer. Well, let's, we let's do another thing. You need to let's go. Let's do another 10 minutes and then I'm oh, going to have to, to break. Right. I was saying to the guys earlier on, whenever I saw the name Jan de Surma, I imagined a big, tough Swedish guy for some reason. <laughs> I, I didn't realize just seeing that name on the paper, I was like Janus or like Jankowski or something like that. I didn't realize, yeah. So <laughs> my mom's name is Jan, so that's where I yeah. think of it. Yeah. We well, have got a question similar to what I was asking. You've got a favorite young artist who's working on a current series. <clears throat> Um, favorite young artist, or just ones you like? That's we haven't got to use the word favorite because we don't want to. I know it's, it's upset people. A, always a difficult word. Yeah. Something you enjoy that's newer. Mm. Something that's got your interest that's newer. <clears throat> or one of your students is one of your students out there doing something that's just wow. Actually, I'm I'm gonna, I'm gonna plug my my daughter's. Uh, new project <laughs> awesome yeah go for it she's That's working cool. on let me let me see if uh once again i'm gonna i'm gonna disappear from the screen for a second here uh, <laughs> did, did you actually teach her when she was at the school as oh, a student yeah. so yeah. was that ever a, was that ever an awkward um dynamic <laughs> do your homework <laughs> i can't have a dog here we haven't got a dog what are you talking about <laughs> i mean uh, you know I've, I've worked with both my kids right from when they were were young so it's it's not a problem you know every we all understand what's going on. You know, I've been working with them since they were little kids, yeah. uh, not just in, uh, in artwork, but when they were uh, very young, uh, teaching the martial arts too. And, uh, oh, yeah. so there, there's more, there's more interplay between, um, uh, uh, comics and martial arts. And you might think there's, she's <laughs> been working on this. Blood she of the do, maybe I'm thinking. Hmm. G Kundo. The martial uh, arts no um uh for them it was uh taekwondo taekwondo, taekwondo. Yeah. so what is it your daughter's doing there yeah, this is called blood of the taken blood of the taken i mean what who who's oh, the publisher 
So um, she was self-publishing this before, wow. and now she has a, uh, a publisher, and that will be announced pretty soon too. So this is going to okay. become a graphic novel. Oh, cool! What is that vampires or something like that? Yep. Ah. So, um, of course, Sean has been working professionally for well over 10 years. Um, she's colored a lot of my stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, everything from uh, work for DC and Dynamite to the Captain Kronos Vampire Hunter project they did for Titan. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and now she's, I mean, she, for Blood of the Taken, she's writing, penciling, inking, lettering. She's doing oh, the whole thing. Yeah, Oh, wow. Wow. So keep your eye open for that one. Absolutely. Is Indeed. there a link or anything we can put in here? To get yeah, we'll get some links off you later and put them all in the description so people watch it. Yeah. Can I'll, check them out. I'll, just, I'll, get, I'll get you links for all this stuff. Um, do, do, do your children's art styles like, similar to either of the, of the parents? So they, they favor one side to the other or take bits of... I think when, when you see Sean's stuff, you'll see some influence from both directions. Um, you, you might be inclined to say that her style may be more reminiscent of mine purely because she's working on her, this book is more horror stuff. And people tend to think, you know, between Jan and I, when you think about horror stuff, you think probably more about me than, than Jan. Yeah. Because, you know, when people think about Jan's stuff, they think about Star Wars. Mm. Yeah, I was never a Star Wars collector, so. <laughs> <laughs> now, um, Odd question before we wrap up here, or odd request, if you will. <laughs> so you can't talk about these things till the beginning of next year on these new projects you're working on? Right. Can we get you on to talk about them when you can talk about them? Oh, yeah, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> yeah, no, no problem. You know, I, I, I'm actually dying to talk about these uh, yeah. projects because one of them, I, I, I'll talk about the project indirectly without talking about it. One of them I signed on to in 2018. Oh, wow. The, 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 the uh, publisher, um, I should say the editor, contacted me and he said, I've, I've got this, this project. And I, I posted a drawing of this particular character just for the fun of it. And he's like, ah, that's, that's what we want. We want that look. And he contacted the licensor, and I got the project just based on this one sketch that I did. And I was all ready to go. And then uh, they, they got a writer, and then that didn't work out. And then they asked me to write it, and that didn't work out. And then they got some other writers. And, and this whole this whole process was going on and on. And I thought the project was dead, and I didn't hear from them. And then like a year went by, and then I got an email. It was like, OK, we're ready to go. And I'd forgotten all about it. I was like, what's going <laughs> And so, uh, you know, it's like three years. So now, now finally, we're actually doing this project. And I'm like, oh, this is really exciting. Can we talk about it? No, you can't talk about it. It's like, uh, so, so here we well, are. Let me know when you can talk about it. And we will absolutely. Yeah. Know. If you want to come back, we'll certainly have you any time. Yeah. <laughs> Open I, invitation. I, 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 if I your daughter wants people. to come back and talk about her work, she has yeah. an invitation. You have the point of contact. We would be happy to hype you guys around the world. Honored. Absolutely, uh, yeah. Absolutely All right, great. To hype you guys around the world. I, I like what Kyle was saying. You get, get a, a loose camera and show us everything around the room. That would be awesome. We'll, like, just yeah. grab things off the shelf and say, look at this. And, right. Trust me. Yeah. If there's a little clutter on the floor, nobody the pulp, will notice. Because the pulp the magazines. Floor, it's just like a bomb went off in here. It's, yeah. it's getting better. Uh, wow. He, here's what I want to ask. That's a question I remembered earlier on. I, I love a bit of H.P. Lovecraft and Cthulhu and that. Have you ever done anything Lovecraftian art-wise? Um, okay, now I have to think about this for a minute. So, any Lovecraft stuff? Not, not really. Um, you know, we we touched on some Lovecraft stuff in uh, Superman and Batman versus Vampires and Werewolves. You know, sort yeah. of intentionally creating some characters in there that looked Lovecraftian. But not, not directly doing any Lovecraft. That would be mm. fun to do, though. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'd love to see that. Yeah. Uh, what, what, what is your taste in the horror? You say you've got a Frankenstein shirt on. You say you love the old horrors. What is your sort of horror taste? You, like gory? You like gory stuff? Or you prefer the dark and the shadows and the... So Sophic. you mean in terms of uh, what I like to watch or what I like to yeah. do? Watch. Yeah, watch, do either. Oh, <laughs> you know, I, I love I love the the old stuff. You know, the Universal yeah. Hammer, that kind of stuff. 
those are my go-tos. Yeah. I'll, I'll still pick up an episode of the X-Files now and then. Um, uh, there, there's been some really interesting newer horror, thank God. You know, we're, 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 I think we're back in an age now where we're seeing some great new horror movies like Nope. That, that was a great horror movie. And, you know, uh, Jordan Peele is a tremendous horror director. Um, so we're, we're seeing some good stuff. Uh, I, I feel like there's a lot of bad horror being done right now. I'm not a, a, a fan of the torture porn movies that they're making. You know, that's like yeah uh, eh, whatever you know pretty much uh so that's that's not a direction that i find very interesting mm -hmm. in, in terms of what i like to do um i'm 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 interested in doing any kind of horror uh, you know we're doing this western uh horror thing that i'm doing with jm that's great I, you know i like period stuff uh doing that captain chronos thing was wonderful that was that was great crossover superhero horror stuff is always fun to do yeah. um, i did that weird secret squirrel thing with uh with jm that wasn't that was in a way a horror story um because they, they'd been shrunk and, and there was all kinds of weird elements to that story was uh, that dc hannah barbera crossover was that was that you don't talking about secret squirrel which one was it when you said the secret squirrel that wasn't when D dc and hannah barbera were like mixing crossing over yeah thing. yeah that was a weird crossover stuff <laughs> oh, I, I haven't got that i need to check that one i need to check that one out <laughs> and i usually do um uh an anthology story every year with uh uh sandy uh king for their uh uh for john carpenter's anthology horror stories and i never oh. know what that's going to be um okay so the the last one I did, which was um, which issue was that? Is this, is this one? Let's see, is that number eight? Um, what was this one the year before? The the most recent one, yeah, it was. So that's in this issue, Halloween Nights. Oh, so the story I did in this one, uh, my son Jack colored my story in this one. So I don't know if you guys ever pick up these tales for Halloween night, but these are really good horror anthologies. I've never heard of them. What they the stories are they? Are they comic book anthologies? It's uh, comic books. I've never heard of it. Really? Oh, you should definitely pick these up. Um, so um, I think in this issue, I did I did a story, and uh, like I say, Jack Jack colored this issue. Let's see, um, there's a couple pages that from our story here. So if you if you haven't been picking these up, I I, I recommend picking up a few of now for Halloween night. You just sold a couple of copies of those for sure. <laughs> I'm searching, searching, I'm searching out now. It sounds good. Yeah. Have you watched the uh, Werewolf by Night uh, movie? Uh, oh, me? that was so much fun. I really liked that. Yeah, me too. Yeah, I thought it was good. Oh my goodness! You can't find. Oh, I can't see it on uh, my comic shop. I don't want to wrap this there. up, oh, but yeah. I want to let you go. But man, the gratitude is yeah. endless for this, you know. And That's I will awesome, occasionally man. bug you for a future visit, but again, the door is wide open. <laughs> right? Yeah. You <laughs> And it, you said X Files, and I'm sitting here thinking Graham does a great show on Tuesday nights where we talk about everything from UFOs and stuff like that. And if you want to talk X Files stuff, I, let's I actually did Tuesday night to talk about. Yeah, it. I showed off my what I'm doing. I go for my boxes on a Tuesday night, and the first box was Firestorm, and I was like, "Oh, it's a Mandrake! I didn't remember Mandrake doing this." <laughs> uh, yeah, working on the, the especially the Wildstorm X Files story that I did with Steve. You know, we did the crossover. 30 days a night x file stuff that was a lot of fun to draw right cool <laughs> i didn't know that so much stuff you you know, you know can't keep up with it I, I can't obviously buy everything i That's actually funny. got a load of groom jack i didn't even realize you'd done them and i was trying to get rid i was trying to sell them i've you know, sold most of them now i didn't know you actually worked on it but never mind <laughs> 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 Uh, anyone got any last questions or anything you want to tell us before you get, we, we let you go to I'd, I'd just whatever? like to see that I'd just like to see the artwork that you showed us for wisdom uh, because 
It looks fantastic. Can we just have another look at that original artwork? See that. <laughs> sure. Bring that back. Up. That's that is that is fantastic. Bravo! Standing golf clap. G money. Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. I I'm really pleased. I signed up for the uh, Kickstarter. So I'll be getting, I'll be getting. Uh, this, this was this was great, you know, uh, getting to work on a, a, a creator own thing with JM yeah. was, was fantastic. It's uh, I've, I've only done like, um, you know, DC stuff with with JM before. It's our first time doing something that we're both really invested in. It was fantastic. Yeah. It was just great. Yeah, and I told him, yes. and I'm gonna tell you when that stuff actually hits the shelves, like next April or whatever. I'm obviously going to bug you both again and say, "Hey, if you want to promote it more, <laughs> please come on our little show." Uh, yeah, we need we need a, a, a JM and a Tom Mandrake. Yeah, <laughs> all at the same time. That sounds good. To me. <laughs> yeah. You can hang out and uh, reminisce. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I annoyed them like crazy last week because JM was my number one get, and I got to him, and then. Uh. We were, uh, but seriously, we could get yeah, so. if we get Tom and JM on just to chat to each other, we just sit here quietly and listen to them yeah, chat. We, <laughs> seriously, if, if you want to have a laugh, just sit and look at us at the side with our jaws agape going. <laughs> Knock yourselves out, fellas. We just, just flies on the wall. That would be so awesome. So, but yeah, great. I'm going to do the American thing again. Dude, yeah. seriously, greatly appreciate you. Appreciate oh, yeah. you coming on. I no, appreciate all your stuff through the years. Thank you again for showing off that wisdom piece because damn. <laughs> <laughs> damn would I love to have that hanging on my wall. <laughs> wow. Uh, oh, we don't, and uh, just send this your link so I can add them to the description because all I've got is that old blinking website which is not really yours by the looks of it. <laughs> yeah, that, like I say, that, that was an ancient one. but uh, Yeah. Uh, that was on the yeah. wiki page. Wiki wiki leads to that. Like the Wikipedia page leads to that. that page. Right. Yeah. I, so. I guess maybe I need to sign up for for wiki and then change that, huh? <laughs> yeah, maybe. Um, how how shall I send the uh, links to you? So you can send just, the car and he can post just them send them to me in the messages and okay, uh, I'll relay I'll, it. I'll come and follow you on Instagram uh, if you want to <laughs> contact. Yeah, we'll get you followed on Instagram. We'll I'll follow myself. You know, you got okay. three old farts from around the world who cannot wait to hype anything you put your hands on, anything uh -huh. your family puts their hands on. We're going to be talking about it and bragging about this because, you know, whatever uh -huh. to the world, we got to hang out with Tom Mandrake. So <laughs> we get cool points here. So All right. you know, we will be happy to hype any. Well, hey, I'm a hype man, but everyone knows that now. So, <laughs> but yeah. Can't wait. Okay. Can't wait to just spread the word, spread the love, spread the accolades. Because again, I, you guys never hear it enough. There's no way you hear it enough. You may see a hundred <laughs> fans a uh, fan, or a thousand fans, but you you cannot hear enough how impactful <laughs> your words, your stories, your art, your history. It's genuinely impactful. To the random schmo right down the road, all the way around the world, every well, day. So this is why I I always tell my students that no matter what you think about any comic book that you ever produce, if somebody comes up, you never to you at a convention, you never say oh, I didn't do a good job on that one because yeah. every comic book that you ever make is somebody's favorite comic book. Yeah, doesn't yeah, matter. Yeah, I answered that last week. I think as well. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, he had the same, James had the same thing. He did, yeah, yeah, definitely. Great minds think alike. You, you, you've got to, re whether or not you like it, you've got to respect the work. And somebody, some, somebody grabbed it on the on a bad day, and it got them through it. And I understand that because the same things happened to me. You know, there are some yeah. some truly terrible comic books and movies that got me through a bad day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well. And if you're ever having a bad day in the future, reach out to us. We will blow as they all we'll say. We'll make it worse. People's ass. <laughs> but no. I'll blow the helium up your ass and lift you up <laughs> oh, if you're having a bad day. Because if you need reminded, man, there are yeah. thousands of us out there that will remind you mm. that you're well, dude. 
You're awesome. I, hopefully stream got a few people for a bad day as well. If anyone watching this having a bad day, uh, thanks for watching. <laughs> Hope it makes you feel better. <laughs> well, this has been a good day and I appreciate yeah. it, guys. Thank you so much. It's been a great day. Thank you. We really appreciate it. Thank you very much. <laughs> All right. Great. Cheerio. Great Bye. 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 Have a great amazing day. I'll have a great amazing day. Have a great amazing day. I hope you have a great amazing day.